Hello everyone, my video this week is going to give you 10 reasons to avoid moving to Sedona, Arizona. So avoid moving to Sedona, Arizona if you can't handle these 10 facts. So stay tuned because I'm going to tell you what it is laid on the line and if you think you can't handle these things then definitely don't move to Sedona. <laughs> channel is living in northern Arizona. Well, I'll teach you everything you ever want to know about living in the northern half of the state of Arizona. If you do me a favor, please hit the like button because that helps other people looking for this type of content to find the video and to find my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, you might want to do so right now. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll hear um, notification every time I upload a video to this channel because, of course, you're going to want to see it. My name is Dawn Dickinson. I sell real estate in the northern half of the state, Sedona, Flagstaff, Verde Valley, Prescott, and Payson. If you have a question about real estate, you can do what other people do all the time, and that's to reach out with, to me with like a phone call, text, email, or go to the link below in the description and schedule an appointment on my calendar where we could do a phone call or a Zoom call, and that will help you decide is Northern Arizona the right place for you to relocate. So that being said, I'm going to start with the 10 reasons that you might not want to move to Sedona, Arizona. Okay, the first reason to avoid moving to Sedona, Arizona is if you can't handle this fact, uh, a lot of time there'll be some crazy ideas floating out there. Now, I am into all the spiritual woo-woo kind of stuff, but then a lot of it goes over the line. So I'm going to give you an example. When I first moved to Sedona, I moved there like February 1st, uh, 2019, and I moved into a duplex, and for some reason they had messed up and hadn't turned the electricity on. It was very cold and we're on the phone with the power company. They had to send somebody out and the technician came and gave us the story that he was out in the spot that he needed to go to turn on, I don't know what he needed to do in the spot, but there were tons of tumbleweeds. Now you know how in Arizona tumbleweeds will collect, especially after a windstorm and they'll be all in a pile. And there was a guy there at the tumbleweeds looking at them saying that there were aliens in the tumbleweeds that were communicating with him. So that's one of the kind of things that you might hear living in Sedona. The other thing is some people think that Bell Rock is a place that spaceships come down and land on or beam stuff up or, you know, Bell Rock being a spaceship hub. Now, I want to tell you that I can see Bell Rock from my house. I've never seen a spaceship hovering or landing or anything, although if I do, I hope I get that on video because that would be awesome. So avoid moving to Sedona if you can't handle uh, people with some crazy ideas. Now, number two, this is actually a warning, and this can happen everywhere, right? But uh, Sedona, because it's such a spiritual center, there are other people, charlatans, charlatans, that might come in and pose as a guru and try to rip you off. Now, I want to start with saying that I don't think this was intentional, but many of you remember um, back in what, 2009, 2010, 2011, there was a sweat lodge retreat with a self-help guy named, uh, I think it's James Arthur Ray. Now, again, I don't think he did anything with malintent, but he did this sweat lodge ceremony and it was so hot that a couple of people died. So you have to be careful of people that are claiming to be gurus and may not be gurus. And in fact, they could be dangerous and misleading if they think in their own head that they're a guru and they're not. So you just gotta be careful of that type of person that could show up in Sedona. And the other thing is I've seen these places and, and beautiful, reputable new age type centers where they will have people that work there that will offer their services sometimes i wonder are they trying to rip you off like for instance uh there was a person operating that offered sessions healing sessions which healing sessions could be good but it was somehow going to release this person from their ex and do a ceremony and it was going to be like 550 bucks and i'm like wow you know that seems like a lot for a uh, attachment releasement ceremony. So be careful of that kind of stuff. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but uh, I would be skeptical to pay that much for something that 
I don't know, that's kind of questionable. So again, number two, if you can't handle um, people that might come in and pose as what they're not, um, Sedona might not be the place for you. Again, I don't want to say everybody's like that. I'd say 85% of the people practicing here are good with good intentions, but like in anywhere in life, you just got to be careful not to get taken advantage of. So that's reason number two to avoid moving to Sedona. Number three is if you don't like wildlife that could walk up on your porch. I know I have a friend of mine that the javelina must have a pathway through her yard and they often will like stand on the doorstep or stand on, you know, right at the back porch and congregate looking for prickly pear cactus or whatever it is they look for. So uh, if you don't like that, uh, avoid Sedona. Another thing is once my neighbor came and said, oh, you should have saw it. You know, there was a squirrel on that tree and the squirrel jumped down onto your front porch and a bobcat chased the squirrel and they were kind of scrambling around and they all left and she said, but the good news is the squirrel got away. So if you're scared of wildlife or that bothers you or if you open the door at night and hear the coyotes howling and you think they're a block away, um, they probably are. They're probably running through the ditch that runs all through Sedona, there are many washes and stuff. So coyotes like to go through those ditches. Uh, if that bothers you, again, avoid living in Sedona. Okay, number four is if you're a night owl because a lot of stuff closes down, you know, after eight, after nine, I think the grocery store, uh, Clark's closes on either nine or 10 at night. So if you're a night person and like to go shopping at midnight or if you like to have dinner out at 10.30, Definitely don't want to move to Sedona, especially in the village of Oak Creek where I live, where all the old people live, because they're going to be shutting down early. And another thing is sometimes I get up real early because as soon as the sun comes out in the summertime, the dogs are circling in the bed. They want breakfast. And so maybe at 5.30 a.m. I'd want to go to the grocery store and it's not going to open until 6.30. So if you like to go whenever you want, any time of day, out for shopping or restaurants or any of that, definitely don't want to live in Sedona. Okay, number five is if you don't like homeless people. Now, I wanna start with saying there are not a lot of homeless people in Sedona, but especially in the summertime, you'll see more that do some panhandling. Not that much in the village, but I have seen them like maybe standing outside a subway asking for someone to pay for their lunch. Um, if you can't handle that, uh, might want to avoid it. And also in West Sedona near the Safeway and the Bashes, there are often homeless people standing out in the driveway with their signs or being in the parking lot, you know, wanting money hand panhandling. So again, you'll see that probably anywhere in the United States, but if it bothers you, particularly in the summertime, you're going to see it in Sedona in some select areas. So that is another reason to avoid moving to Sedona if you can't handle that. Okay, number six, if you want to have a doctor close by. Now, I don't want to say there are no doctors that practice in Sedona because there are. There are just not that many of them and sometimes it's hard to get an appointment with them. Um, also, if you want a hospital nearby, the closest hospital is in Cottonwood and the hospital I trust more is in Flagstaff. Flagstaff is a level one trauma center. So if you're elderly and have a heart condition, say, and you wanna be close to a hospital, or if you wanna be close to a place where there's a lot of doctors nearby, definitely wanna avoid moving to Sedona because not a lot of medical people like right close by. Again, if you're gonna go to Cottonwood, that's only 30 minutes away. Um, the, plenty of doctors and clinics and the hospital in Cottonwood and Flagstaff, class one, level one, whatever it is. I know I got corrected once and I called it a class one trauma center, but uh, level one trauma center in Flagstaff, which is only an hour away. Oh, number seven, you're gonna laugh at me, but it's my pet peeve about the car wash. Now in the village of Oak Creek, there's one car wash and it was recently upgraded and I thought it would never break down again, but sometimes, and for me, this is important because I'm a realtor, right? So I've got a listing appointment or I'm going out with buyers and I wanna just 
on my way out, fill up with gas, and wash the car, and the car wash is broken, which is very annoying. Now, if you're in West Sedona, there are a couple of car washes that, you know, I could drive through and wash my car, because those will probably be open, but, you know, that's gonna be half hour each way out of my way, and I don't want to, so if you're like me and have a pet peeve about the car wash being broken down a lot, Sedona, especially Village of Oak Creek, might not be the place for you. Okay, number eight is traffic. Now, in the high season, there's a lot of traffic, particularly because the um, 179, which gets you from Interstate 17 to Sedona, and you actually go through Village of Oak Creek, and then there's the Y intersection, which splits, and you can either go uptown, or you could go to West Sedona. That route gets very congested in the high season. Now, the high season being particularly March and April, and again in October, November. Probably the only season it's not high season right now is summer, you know, June, July, August, and then maybe again in January. So if you can't handle slow traffic and one lane of traffic, uh, definitely want to live in Sedona because you're not going to avoid it. You're going to want to go out somewhere in the high season and there's going to be traffic and you're going to be mad. So definitely avoid Sedona if you can't handle that. Okay, one more thing, well, a couple more things, but this one, I never even thought of it, but I did um, go out with the person on the 89A between Uptown Sedona and Flagstaff. So if you're going to go to Slide Rock State Park, for instance, or find one of those beautiful homes in Oak Creek Canyon, you're going to have to go through 89A. And 89A is a narrow two-lane highway, and it's very curvy, and on one side, or the other side or both it's going to be a long drop so if you're afraid of those narrow curvy roads going through the woods uh, want to avoid living in Sedona because you're going to inevitably want to take that road especially if you buy a house in Oak Creek Canyon you won't be able to avoid it also a lot of times there's a lot of traffic on that road and in the winter time that road could have a fatal accident because there'll be ice and people will, you know, get in an accident because they'll slip. Uh, definitely avoid it if you're scared of that kind of road. Now, I do want to say right now it's under construction, so avoid driving there at all right now because it's under construction, and I don't know what they have planned. Maybe they're going to make it wider and safer for the next generation of people driving through that road, but definitely if you're scared of narrow, curvy, mountain-winding roads, avoid living in Sedona. Number 10. If uh, you're bothered by strange behavior or strange activity, you might want to avoid living in Sedona. And I'm just going to give you an example. Um, not long ago, I was in the my office, you know, the Sedona office, um, doing some business. And I come out and uh, there's a guy, there's a van parked in the parking lot, just a van and he's open. Obviously, he's living out of his van or something similar to that. And it's just a guy wearing a tiny pair of shorts. Uh, kind of like the shorts we wore in the 70s, or guys wore in the 70s, you know, short shorts. And he's just doing a handstand. He's just there in the parking lot on a handstand, maybe thinking upside down inversion is good for his health. But so you walk out, you're trying to be professional, and there's a guy half naked doing a handstand in the parking lot. So if that kind of weirdness is a bothersome to you, another thing is a lot of times on Bell Rock Trail, people will be just off to the side, they'll be in a yoga pose, you know, and the thing is, it's like, I don't know how you can do that and not fall over, but um, again, some weird sights if you're on the trail or just around town that people like want to do some of these things that you might find weird. And if you're offended by that, you don't want to live in Sedona. Um, last thing is uh, occasionally we've been getting flash flood alerts. If you get a lot of rain in the heavy season, uh, not as much flash floods happening in Sedona. A lot of it is in nearby Verde Valley, but um, there are areas in a flood zone, so you have to be careful about floods in the monsoon season. Now that's it. Avoid moving to Sedona if you can't handle those 10 facts. My name is Dawn Dickinson. I do live in beautiful Sedona, and I sell real estate in Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, Prescott, Payson. So if you're interested in learning more about um, real estate in northern half of state, please give me a call, text, email, or schedule something on my calendar. The channel is living in northern Arizona, and I post something every single week about the topic, so please hit the thumbs up if you like the video, and I hope to see you back here again next week.